base model M4 Mac mini is a pro computer, at least according to Apple. And I don't just mean that this is good enough to do pro workloads. I mean that Apple has already called this exact configuration pro, just somewhere else. Also, it is good enough for a whole lot of pro workloads. This is the M4 MacBook Pro, and this computer does get a pro moniker straight from Apple. The base model of this MacBook Pro comes with the M4 SoC, same one that's in the Mac Mini. In this video, I'm gonna compare these two computers to show that this year, the Mac Mini should really be called the Mini Pro. I'm gonna put them through tests. I'm gonna make them play Cyberpunk. I'm gonna compare their thermals and their performance. Because these two computers aren't just similar, they're the same. Apple doesn't have laptop M4s and desktop M4s, just M4. They start with the same number of cores, same split between four performance cores and six efficiency cores, same 10 core GPU, and before any upgrades, they have the same 16 gigs of RAM. That RAM has the same 120 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. These are literally the same thing, just wrapped in two different beautifully extruded aluminum shells. They've got the same Thunderbolt 4 capability, something that's often misunderstood online. The base model M4's got Thunderbolt 4. You only get Thunderbolt 5 starting at the M4 Pro chip on either computer. They'll score the same same or about the same on every benchmark. And I'm gonna demonstrate that later in the video. There's a chapter marker for it down below if I'm boring you and you're just here for the raw data. These two computers will export photos and videos in about the same amount of time. They can push video to the same number of screens at the same resolutions. And for instance, using two external 5K studio displays does not use any extra GPU and it doesn't slow down the computers at all thanks to Apple's display engines and the SOC. So these are actually the same computer. Apple, you gotta figure this naming thing out. If this this is a pro computer, this is a pro computer too. In my humble opinion, if anything, the base model MacBook Pro should have just been called the MacBook, like it was four generations ago or whatever. I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding with the MacBook Pro, and specifically with the 14-inch MacBook Pro, on the subject of thermal throttling. Interestingly, the base model M4 MacBook Pro largely does not have a thermal throttling problem. I actually tried to find videos of a teardown of this computer online and for some reason can't. I thought maybe this was sharing the same guts as the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, and that's why maybe it doesn't thermal throttle easily because it's got an overpowered cooling system. But I couldn't find proof of that. So let's open this thing up. I fix a kit. I can just push that around. And would you look at that? Just one fan. I'm really proud of the Apple engineer who came up with this particular cooling system. You deserve something really nice this year, sir or ma'am. This fan and this heat pipe are enough to prevent this computer from thermal throttling even during benchmarks. And it only thermal throttles a little during the devastating Lightroom RAW photo export, which uses all CPUs alongside all GPU cores at once. A test that throttles every Mac except for the M4 Max Mac Studio. And what do you know? the proest computer of them all, also not called Pro in the name, Apple. The only actual built-in peripheral advantage of the MacBook Pro is this built-in SDXC2 card reader. As a guy who makes videos, I will say it's quite handy having one right on the side of the laptop. Then again, as a guy with a robust home network, I find it very handy to have an ethernet jack built into the back of the mini. So. I don't know. As far as USB-C ports, the mini has two more than the MacBook, even if they are just the 10 gigabits per second ones. In my opinion, neither of these computers have enough ports or not the right ports. I've got game controllers and microphones that only want to connect with USB-A. There are times when I've got cameras, multiple cameras, wireless microphones. I've got clacky keyboards and a mouse. Who wants to live with just one monitor? I've got multiple monitors I wanna plug in. So I'm living that hub life no matter what until I end up with a Mac Pro. Which is a perfect segue to this custom design to scratch a nostalgic itch in my brain, Mac Mini Hub, that solves this problem adorably. This is the walkiest docking station. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And it works as a standalone hub. You could use it with the MacBook, but it's designed to fit right on top of your Mac Mini, turning it into an adorable retro-inspired Macintosh with a working screen. Here's an original Macintosh Plus for scale. And by itself, this thing is fun, but it also gives you four USB-A ports, two on the front, two on the back, so you can plug in your non-Apple keyboard and mouse. It solves your SD card problem and has a micro SD card to go with it. It replaces the USB-C that you use to dock with it. And I don't know what you would leave up on such a tiny screen like this, but I just have it running HTOP in the terminal 
in like a retro skinned terminal just because I think it looks cool. This hub does not interfere with thermal management. Almost no heat comes off the top of a Mac mini. All the intake and exhaust is happening down in the bottom. And as you can see, this is like slightly off the table still. So it's, it's still getting its thermal management the same. Also, the video is passed through this USB-C cable. So you're still freed up with your HDMI port for your main monitor. But this does have a monitor in if you have a different source you want to use. And finally, there is an NV, oh, it's stuck, an NVMe drive slot built right into the back. So you've even got external storage covered. No tools. It's a 10 gigabits per second connection. It's hilarious. There's a link below. Next, let's get to the tests. Let's get to the proof. Starting, as always, with Cinebench. And this test took 10 minutes, so I'm speeding it way up. And I'm putting up the live graphs here for the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro with MX Power Gadget. And looky here, the CPUs in both computers are running at a very steady 3.9 gigahertz. This light blue line on the graph here is what will dip during a thermal throttle. We'll see that later. They're both pulling 22 watts to do their work and they're even at about the same temperature, about 80 degrees Celsius. And that means they're gonna score about the same on the test. Mac Mini 893, MacBook Pro 922. That's within 3% of each other. And I ran the whole thing again on the GPU test. Cinebench 2024 has a GPU test. And on that, we ended up with 3908 to 4000. Closing in on just a 2% difference, also known as the same. And importantly, pushing these computers for 10 straight minutes at 100% CPU never caused either of them to thermal throttle. All modern Macs, from the Mac Mini to the Mac Studio, feel equally fast now for what, and I'm going to make up a statistic here, but for what 90% of the population of Earth uses a Mac for. And by that, I mean that an M4 Mac Studio, and I know this because I use one, will not feel any faster when turning the computer on, using email, going on the web, when working in Teams or Word or Excel or even AutoCAD. Regular work from home desk job stuff is identical on every M4 Mac. Even when video editing, if your videos look like mine do, and I'm editing this video you're watching now, two different 4K cameras, all these dazzling special effects, all edited on the base model M4 Mac mini. This is true for photo editing too. There's no actual noticeable benefit from the beefier Macs other than importing, exporting, gaming, the act of compiling code, or things that require a heavy 3D environment. Oh, and local AI stuff, which does not include using ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini. I mean, when they're running on the actual Mac. And apparently Logic Pro audio engineering stuff, if you're using lots of AI filters and stuff that I don't understand. And that's because that list of things can harness parallel processing linearly forever. Meaning the more CPU cores you throw at it, the faster it's gonna be always. But what's never been true before the M series chips from Apple is that from the cheapest $600 computer to the $5,000 dollar monster, each of the individual CPU performance cores inside here all run at the same speed. And for most of the things that you ever do, your computer is either only going to use a few cores to do it anyway, sometimes just one, or it's not going to be pushing the full power of those cores. For instance, unzipping this mammoth 32 gigabyte set of raw photos for the Lightroom export I'm going to test in a bit, you can see that the Mac mini is only using about 50% of the performance core CPU power, even less of the efficiency cores. It's just leaving a ton of room on the table for you to be doing something else at the same time. What I find even crazier is that this unzip process is actually no faster on my $3,500 M4 Max MacBook Pro, which is beat up and kind of dirty. When I unzip that same compressed folder, this Mac is only using like 14% of its CPU core power. And I think that's because some of the things your computer does, unzipping included, are only single threaded. It'll only use one processor at a time. And the cores in the M4 Max are the same speed as the cores in the base model Mac Mini over here. It's just that there's more of them in this computer, which in this case just leaves more cores sitting idle. And on the stats, it looks like it's using four cores, but it turns out it's just hopping around any given four cores at a time for thermal efficiency. Other things do use all the available power. For instance, when I dropped those 1200 photos into Lightroom, here goes every performance and efficiency core straight to 100 while it's making previews and scraping those photos for metadata. So when the software is written to take advantage of parallel processing, lots of cores, then and only then is when M4 Pro, Max, and Ultra will act way faster. But your productivity, white collar, wasting away all day in meetings apps, don't. But that's not what this video is supposed to be about. I'm getting off topic. These are the same computer. I am yelling. One of my commenters said I yell instead of talk. It wears them out. So sorry. Next test. And actually, for some of you, this is a definitive one because these two base model Macs can game. And I'm gonna make a caveat about growing up many, many moons ago because my gaming brain is more attuned to something like the Xbox 360. But 
Check this out. I went ahead and fired up Cyberpunk 2077 on a base model Mac Mini. Not the Pro, no upgraded RAM, and it will lock in that game at 30 frames per second. I even have the graphics set not at 1080, but 1440p. On the M4 MacBook Pro, same exact story. 30 frames per second, locked in, no overheating. I tried it out with the Assassin's Creed Shadows game also. Super demanding game, but if you're happy with it looking more like a Switch 2 than a PS5, no ray tracing. I mean, it's the same game, just slightly less pretty reflection these guys can play it. But the point of this that I keep forgetting to stick to is that these two computers perform the same. They both get about the same FPS on all the same settings. Finally, the Lightroom peak stress test. I guess the coders over at Adobe are just better at maximizing performance for M-series processors than everyone else. Because like when exporting video, for instance, almost all of the work these computers do happens in the media engine. During a Final Cut Pro export, the CPUs and GPUs in these things are just chilling. Which, on one hand, makes it great. If you have a long export, you can just keep using your computer like normal. But on the other hand, there's a lot of meat left on the bone. Split up some of that work and give it to the CPUs and GPUs. What's the harm? Anyway, Lightroom large raw photos to JPEG exports does put it all on the table. So my final demonstration to show that if you accept the MacBook Pro as a pro computer, then the M4 base model Mac mini is pro too. This is 1200 raw photos. You can see now now that when you light up all the CPU and GPU cores together, now you're pulling more like 30 watts from the system. It was only pulling 20 watts with the Cinebench tests. And therefore, now we do see some throttling. And the MacBook Pro will suffer from it slightly more than the Mac Mini does. Which just goes towards my argument. If anything, the Mini's more pro than the MacBook Pro is pro, you know? But ultimately, though they're both throttling a little, neither is slowing down more than 10 to 15% of their max speed. And in the end, the Mac Mini was able to export these 1200 raw photos to JPEGs only six seconds faster than the MacBook Pro. <sighs> okay, final thoughts. Obviously, if you wanna be moving around and working from a train or a bus or a coffee shop, the MacBook Pro is the easy choice. But if you're always at the same desk in the same spot and you thought for some reason that you needed to have a Pro computer because you're a professional, the Mac Mini meets every single performance target of the MacBook Pro. It's just a fact. That's all I got. Miracle runs on Duncan. That was a lot. That was a lot. I hope my smug face was good enough as I'm not doing it again. <coughs> ah.